Oh my god, all those hotspots. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? All of the hotspots. It's time for us to go to Kilika. So, um, fun story about me recording this. The first time I tried to record this, I went through all of chapter four and I missed a single interaction between Donna and Bartello. I missed just one. Wow. Came to this chapter and I got a cutscene where Donna dumps him and then the game over theme plays and it says episode uh, concluded. And I was like, oh, fuck off. Oh, fuck off. I <laughs> ruined it. And so I had to go back and re-record all of the CCTV footage again. Wow. I had to watch all of that twice. <laughs> wow. That was fun. Anyway, there's a lady here. If you run through the woods and press A a lot and find a bunch of monkeys, she gives you a uh, garment grid that has Dark Knight boosting capabilities. So that's Wow, fun. it's broken enough, and now I'll just make <laughs> it more broken. Yep. Nice. Let me go to the temple. I want to see my sister. This road is closed. I can't let you through. What's wrong with wanting to see our families? Yeah! Let's do it! But without orders, I can't let you pass. My, 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 my. So in my original recording where I fucked up, Donna didn't intervene here. Yuna had to actually put on her, hey, I'm the high summoner, fucking listen to me gloves for once and deal with this <laughs> herself. Behave. Haven't you noticed you're the only one still nitpicking over party politics? New Yemen this, youth league that. It's called a complex, get over it. Weren't you listening to the song? <laughs> it was a pretty good song, I've gotta say. And it was entirely my own work. <laughs> now let them through. But without the order? I just gave you an order. R right away. Open it! <laughs> I'm sure at some point during FF10 I commented on the impracticality of Donna's clothing, but I feel now's a good time to bring it back. What are you wearing, Donna? I mean, it's clothing. I mean, Riku's basically just wearing a like bikini. A, a bikini, but even she, and even she doesn't look quite as ridiculous as you. So yeah, um, Body wasn't lying. They are fighting over the fact that there's no more fighting happening. <laughs> They're like, hey, the fight's over. Let us in. Let us go see our families. Hmm. Songs are powerful. I guess everyone felt it. What you felt? No, not me. Len. Alrighty, well, um, hmm. while we're here in the woods, there is one thing that we can go and attend to, and we're going to do that right about now, so, uh, oh, hello, Donna. Skulking around, I see. So, uh, if we run over this way, uh, there should be a prompt that kicks in at some point. No, not you, Battle, there should be a prompt. Uh, there it is. If we jump into this tree, how are we supposed to find that? I don't know. But it's pretty obvious. Yeah, yeah. Of course. You jump into that tree, you get a chest and one of the cactuars. We can resume the cactuar hunting now that it's chapter ah. five. Because we didn't manage to get them all before. This one, thankfully, is quite easy. He just has his two big cool kitty friends with him. Quite intimidating when they're just staring you the fuck down, knowing that they can just cast death on you. But thankfully, not in this mini game. God damn it! And then I remember <laughs> the game reminds me. Oh yeah, this is the bullshit mini game where even if you land perfect hits, it can still just miss, and you can still lose. I hate this. <laughs> God damn it! I hate this. Missing shouldn't be possible. If I press the button and the cactuar is the thing that I shot, I should hit the cactuar. <laughs> Simple as that, really. Anyway. What happens if you shoot a quills? I don't know. I imagine they just go, ow, like most things do in this minigame. If you shoot the wrong thing, they usually just respond with mild annoyance. <laughs> 
Anyway, that's Chiapa captured, so we'll uh, deal with that later on when we deal with Beaconal Desert and the terrifying five-star quest that lies within. Nice. So, um, let's wrap up this chapter, which is actually quite easy. All you've really got to do is run up to the temple, and then the rest plays out in cutscene form. Again, if you ballsed up the Comsphere shit, you get a cutscene where Donna doesn't turn up and Bartello's just dejected and it's all sad. But we get the, uh, we get the good ending in this run, thank god. I'm still really bitter about it, actually. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell. Donna! Huh. <clears throat> well, I... It seems to me you have forgotten who it is you are supposed to be guarding. I ought to fire you for just up and leaving me the way you Donna! did. Donna! <laughs> I like the way she's actually pulling the line that she rehearsed while we watched her on the comms sphere. <laughs> like she did practice for this moment and now he's just blown it for her. Donna, please forgive me. I'll apologize as much as you want. Don't say I can't be your guardian anymore. I'll never leave your side again. Aww. Aww. That's so sweet. Shut up. Ugh, you're making such a scene. How humiliating. Don't think that you're off the hook for embarrassing me like this. You'll be making this up to me for the rest of your life. Donna! Bartello, we're leaving. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I love Bartello's noises. <laughs> he just makes noises a lot. Alrighty, so we got them back together. Yay. And that is our second episode complete. There are actually... Some areas actually give you a chance at multiple different versions of episode completes. Oh, wow. Like, there are certain areas where there's more than one mission going on at the same yeah. time. Um, I think in order to get the ultimate dress sphere, what you have to do is you need to get at least one episode complete in every area in the game. Oh, wow. So, that's what I make sure to do. <laughs> Before jumping into New Game Plus, where it doesn't matter so much. <laughs> Tricks of the trade garment grid. Yep, that is a great garment grid. It actually, it helps to boost the usability of a bunch of different dress spheres. So if you put said dress spheres on the grid itself, mm. it makes them easier to use. Essentially what it does is it lowers the time it takes to use certain attacks. Oh, okay, yeah. Say, for example, sword play with the warrior. It mm -hmm. means you don't have to wait as long to bust out those. those oh, moves. that's cool then. Yeah. That's not bad. Anyway, Blitzball season's happening. Fuck Blitzball, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Yep, sorry guys, I know you wanted a 100% LP, but I'm not touching the Blitzball in this game, it's fucking trash. <laughs> it's hot fucking garbage. It could have just been the original game's Blitzball, but no, they had to change it all. They had to make it basically non-interactive and rubbish, and I hate it. The Aurochs aren't coming. I hear they've got their hands full with babysitting. Aww, they should have just brought Vadina along. Now that is contextual dialogue, because you could have come here before going to see Vadina, so... Oh, yeah. Loads of nice little details like that in this game. Why do we have to play? Don't sweat this small stuff! Leave everything to me! ME! So, are we in or what? No. I like that you actually pose it as a question. Fuck off, that's what. It doesn't give me anything towards my 100% completion. Don't have to do it. Not gonna do it. Bye. Oh, you're boring. No, fuck it. It's awful. It's really bad. I don't like it at all. Anyway, if you come over to the famed spot, the... <laughs> <laughs> laughter point, as I like to call it, you get this very emotional cutscene, and it actually helps tie into the episode complete for Luca. Wherever I go, Spira is full of places tied to my memories. Also, the Chapter 5 theme, as I've called it, is going to play a lot during this. 
Memories of my journey. Memories of you. Huh? What's wrong? But it's... You can't see it? See what? You need a break? Kumpo. Uh, this is posed as being like a cute thing, like a, cu a cute thing where this little Moogle helps you retrace your steps and relive your happy memories. But no, that, that, she is hallucinating. That, that's, that's the problem. Why is she hallucinating? <laughs> it's, never, it's never explained or justified why Yuna just starts hallucinating here, but she does. Let's go follow our hallucination. I mean, why not? Yeah, sure. What, what's the worst that could happen? This is a pretty big town. Luca is the second largest city in Spira. But as far as cities you can actually explore, it is the largest. So that's literally all it is, is just flashbacks of the game. Yep. Pretty much. You're hallucinating, love. Yeah, yeah, you're really losing it. That's um slightly concerning that the characters don't even take it that seriously that this is just happening to it. It just is. What was that? <laughs> okay, I could buy a lot of things, but does does whistling not exist in this world? Nobody in this world whistles. Like what? <laughs> How does a civilization get as far as this one has and not discover whistling? <laughs> oh, and just do this and you can whistle perfectly. Yeah. Oh, so cute. Yeah, it's um, it's really lovely. Let's continue to follow the flying Moogle that only I can see. The really haunting thing is Moogle basically leads you to the docks as if it's implying it wants you to just dive into the sea. Drown or some shit. Hope you can swim. Also, this is going to bring back horrible memories because this is where we first met Seymour. I don't think Yuna wants to think about that. That's like that. That goes in the repression bin. That you know <laughs> that, that bin at the back of your brain. <laughs> that you, you don't want to think about that. But it's also where you get to fight LeBlanc. It is also where we fought. Yeah, but that was like by this game standards, like a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not a memory. He acquired that that megaphone from the same place that other characters acquire their weapons. From Hammer Space, yeah. Megaphone space in this case. He's come all the way from Bavel. The tournament is being held to honor his 50 years as Maester. We're here to hang out with the Pope. Or one of the Popes. There are lots of Popes in this game. These are our memories. Yours and mine. It is weird seeing Yuna in an original look, actually. <laughs> now that we've seen her for so long as this gun-toting yeah. Charlie's angel. Confused, but... That's the weirdest thing. You never get a dress fear that lets Yuna and Riku go back to their original appearances, which I thought would be a fantastic little Easter egg. Hmm. Like a like dress fear, like High Summoner or something like that. Yeah, well, that would be broken, because that would just be Aeon Summoning, but yeah. Yeah, but New Game Plus. Oh, yeah. I can dig that. That's not a dream. Not if your heart's pounding like that. You and someone you care about are connected somehow. That's what it is. It's called a heart attack, love. <laughs> oh no! So <laughs> many, so many problems. Both mental and physical health. Uh, suspect right now. Spill it. Maybe we can trade secrets. <laughs> you drive a hard bargain. I guess everyone's like this. We cling to our secrets, our doubts, our memories. We're never able to put them aside. Even though they confuse us, there are some things we can only find in that confusion. I think it's okay to feel that way. Well, that's Luca done. Don't have to worry about Luca anymore. And when I say that, I mean it. We're not going to Luca anymore, and we're not playing Blitzball. Fuck that. So, um, 
You're so boring. I, it's no. Do you know what's boring? Blitzball in this game. It's fucking mind-numbingly dull. And it doesn't actually get you anything that important. The items and accessories you'd get from playing it, you can get from the Monster Arena, or this game's version of the Monster Arena. So, do that instead. Yeah, do that instead. Um, <sighs> last thing we are going to do is we're going to find out who's been sabotaging the Machina on the Oh, yeah, Rates. finally. Yes. You've been waiting on this one. Um, based on how you interacted with the CCTV and how you've interacted with Mihen High Road throughout the game, that will actually change who gets pinned as the as the culprit. But this is the culprit you need to pin for 100%. I am glad you are all here. I would like to talk about the recent string of incidents occurring on the high road. So I'll tell you what, two of these suspects it could have been is that little chocobo eater in the cage and also that guy in the back who's wearing blue. I believe his name is Prophet. He uh, could have been one of the culprits also. But we haven't pinned it on either of them. We've gone for someone a little bit more close to home. Any idea? No, nope, just completely blank. Okay. Hmm. Now then, let us try to figure out who perpetrated these nefarious acts. We have already heard some testimony. The hover lost its balance and overturned while attempting to avoid a passerby. But who could that passerby be? According to the hover's pilot, it was an albed female. We found footprints on one of the malfunctioning machina. So, let me ask you all. Has anyone recently been to the ruins at the High Road's south end? And does anyone recall jumping down from a great height? Oh, it's Riku. <laughs> It's great. I love how the very specific circumstances of how I played this game pins it on Riku doing it. Please try to recall what happened, Riku. And then it it actually shows you how you uh how you got to that conclusion. So in chapter one, because I let the chocobo get past me near the beginning. Mm. We had to go down to the south road in order to capture it. You can actually catch it before then. Yeah. If you do that mini game where you have to try and intercept it. So because I let it get to the south road, there was a cutscene where uh, Riku jumped off of uh, one of the towers and just off camera, what you don't see is that she landed on a machina. <laughs> also, this cutscene, you don't see the fact that the hover goes flying off. The camera is positioned in a way that you only see Riku's running. <laughs> it, it does it very cleverly. Like, if you go back and watch the episode, it does kind of add up, kind of. Little bit of an arse pull, but I see where they're coming from. It was literally just there, <laughs> off screen. <laughs> it, it was me! Precisely. The hover crashed while trying to avoid hitting you. In New Game Plus, I'm going to show you the solution that I prefer, though. I'm going to pin it on the person who I think it actually makes more sense for them to be the culprit. I am sure you meant no harm, but your carelessness invited disaster. Allow me to determine Riku's sentence, if I may. What sentence? Death! <laughs> <laughs> Just pulls out a sword. <laughs> Oh shit, I guess I've got two party members now. <laughs> that was a permadeath, I didn't realise. I shouldn't have come here. It's 
So yeah, here's Riku's punishment. Didn't expect trash duty. Phew. Glad that's all over. Glad that wasn't playable. You must be tired. As Nato did noob. Why the chocobos? They were being employed to power a ferry boat, so I purchased them. Depending on who you pin the whole incident on, that also dictates whether you get to have chocobos in Chapter 5 as well. Yeah. Whether you have them at all, have to pay for them, or get them for free. With this outcome, you have to pay for them. But you do actually need chocobos for two specific things, which I will be showing off. Well, get plucking. Ugh, this stinks. Feathers aren't trash. So, uh, yeah, that's the end of Mehen High Road. Or one of the endings, anyway. Hmm. The one that the game considers to be the 100% ending. And gives you Ragnarok, which means you can cast magic for free. <laughs> yep, it is super. What? <laughs> super goddamn broken, and I love it. It's super good. Wow. Yeah, free MP. So what's the point of MP then? Um, well, it takes an accessory slot to equip it. So, and you only have two accessory slots, so that's the kind of toss up. If you have a mage, yeah, definitely have the Ragnarok. Why the hell wouldn't you? But, you know. Anyway, um, if we go back onto the high road, we can now show you what the chocobos are actually used for. So let's get ourselves one of these sweet yellow boys. It's nice to see chocobos again. Nice to actually ride on them and not have them just be uh, there for breeding, even if they are constricted to the high road itself. So go for a little bit of a run and uh, you want to stop just around here where there's a couple of suspicious markings on the map. This is definitely a prima guide moment. You wouldn't know to do this, but you have to stand here for a couple of seconds. By a couple of seconds, I mean a lot of seconds. You have to stand here for quite a while. Anyway, you say yes to that. And you get a secret chest. Which has the Victor Primoris, a break damage limit or break HP limit for Payne's special dress sphere. Nice. There are six of those items in total for the three special dress spheres. Mm -hmm. I don't think I actually get them all in this run. I'll get them in New Game Plus. I'll be sure to show them off at least. Anyway, bye! <laughs>